Today we're going to do something kind of challenging. We're going to look at how to actually make a confidence interval on a normal curve on Excel. So um, I'm going to show you an example. You can follow this, go at the speed you need, pause when you need to, to try and do it with your own data. So I have two questions here. And I have my summary statistics. I want to show you um, a couple things. I've got this for my average one, and then here is my proportion one. Now, the average one looks pretty nice and easy to read. The proportion one's got just all these crazy numbers, so it's looking pretty hard for me. So I'm going to actually highlight these and um, shrink those down to numbers that are a little um, easier for me to, to comprehend what's going on, a little smaller. And I've also done two things. What I've done is, if I'm going to make a normal curve, I want to kind of know um, the start and the end. We've done this before in another lab, and so I need to know kind of where's the normal curve going to start at. And normally we do three standard deviations out to be a little more precise, I'm going to go four standard deviations out. So what I want you to do is figure out the start and the end of your normal curve. So that means this, the start would be four standard deviations below the mean. So to do that, I simply click in here, I go right to my mean, which is four, and I subtract four times that um, standard deviation. Okay, so four standard deviations out. I do the same exact thing. Um, for uh, the proportion problem where I just type in my p hat and I subtract four times the standard error right here. Okay, awesome. So now I have that. This is, again is a little hard to look at. If you want, you can either go to in to make it easier to look at, or you might find it easier just to deal with these in percents. The only thing with percents is you've got to remember when you're actually writing them down to put them into decimal form. So I think um, well, we'll just work at it from there. So I need to list all the possible numbers you can get. So I'm going to do something called make a series. So here's a new Excel skill for you to make it quick. So let's first do the average one right here. So we start at negative 10. So I write down my first number. I need to list all the possible numbers that I could see on that x-axis. So I could count by ones, but to be more precise, I might count by something smaller. So here is how you do it. Rather than having to type in myself manually like negative 9, you know, negative 8, forget that. I'm going to do something much faster, which is make a series of numbers. So the way you do that is right here. You put that first number in from the bottom. Then I right click. I hold down that little corner, go down and then up. And watch what happens when I let go of my right um, finger. A menu pops up, and I click on series. So for the series, I'm going to want to count down. So that's going to be a column. Okay, my step value, I want to step small so I can really see the nuances on this curve. So I'm not going to do a 1, I'm going to actually step down at a 0.1. When I have a whole number, I'll do 0.1 step down. My stop value is that maximum right here, the standard deviations above. So I'm going to stop at 19. And I'll say OK, and boom, it just did it all for me. Okay, now let's do the same for the um, proportion problem. So here, our p hat. The lowest is 0.2, that's 0.02, okay? Now I'm going to right click, go to that center, get that, that little black. There we go, down and up, holding down with my right hand. There comes that series. Here, this time, I do columns again, but my step value is going to be smaller. I'm dealing with um, decimals here, not whole numbers. So I'm going to actually step down by 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.1, make it even smaller. My stop value here, again, make sure you write it as a decimal, 0.46. Okay, and oh my god, zeros, what's going on here? All right, what we have here is simply that. It's just not showing the whole number, okay? So if I had clicked here and went out, you'd see the number. So what you can simply do is just control shift down, highlight everything, and just if you want to see it all, just go out and you can see all those numbers now. Next thing, in order to make the normal curve graph, I need to have the actual height. So this is going to be my x-axis. I need to know the height so I can get that shape of the normal curve. We've done this before. I'm going to show you one more time. So I've already found it for my average question. For my proportion question, I simply do norm dis. Okay, so we got norm dis that gives us the height of it. Um, I'm going to just open up the equation box to help me out. And so here, let me see if I can put this here. What we need is our x value. So our x value is going to be this number right here that's going to stay the same. For our mean, the mean I always want to stay right where it is. So I'm going to use a new skill here, the absolute reference shortcut, okay? So the mean I know for my p hat, that's this one. Now I want to stay at C3. When I autofill down, I want to stay there. So to get this to stay here, I actually click on the F4 key. 
All right, the F4 key is above the 4, it actually says F4 on it. So you're going to click on that and boom, it turns into, gives you those dollar signs. Same for the standard deviation or standard error right here. Click on that F4 key and you get those absolute reference dollar signs so it doesn't leave. Here, I'm going to actually do a different word, false, because all I want to is that ex height of that exact number, just the height when you're at 0.02. So I don't want true, I want false. Okay, in. Number is zero, but we know why. If we went out, that would be bigger. There it is. And now I'm going to do the autofill the equation. So I just kind of cl click right back in, go here. If I double click, it will autofill all the way down. All right, if you've made it this far, you've just done a lot. All right, we have getting, gotten the height of every part of the normal curve with these points. We've got tons of data thanks to using that series thing. We've gotten all the way down to almost 200 without much work. But now we need to actually form the curve. We did this before. I do want you to realize that we have some weird numbers here. This is about hours, and we have like a negative 10, which makes no sense. But we are building a mathematical model, which means that you sometimes will get numbers that don't make sense, but they're true to the model. And when we actually find do our final analysis, we will probably have to stop at zero and not the negative 10 when we actually talk about the possible hours of people on their phone. All right, but we're still going to use this model to get our information from. So I need to graph it. So to do that, um, we've done this before. I'm going to do it slightly differently. You just highlight all of your confidence interval data, okay, the heights of all of those. Then we're going to go up over here to insert. All right, and we are going to insert right here. You can see it says insert line or area chart. So you can actually insert an area chart. All right, it's right here, the first one that you see. Just click on that. Okay, now right now my area chart is right here at the bottom of uh, my data set, which is a pain. So I'm going to go ahead, um, click on the outside. You can right click, and you're going to actually just cut it, which is fine. It didn't disappear. I'm going to go all the way up to the very top. Just click on any cell, right click. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it, and now it pops up. So now I can actually um, see my chart right up here where I kind of want to see it at the top. All right? Now this chart looks like a normal curve, which is awesome. We've got our frequency here. Um, the one issue that we have, though, is these numbers on the x-axis do not match up with our numbers over here. So we need to change that. So here is an important thing for you to learn how to do. So I activate my graph, okay? It's got the little dots around it, so I know it's activated. I go over here and click on Design. And then I'm going to click on Select Data. Okay, so what I have here is my first series of information, and this is my axes. Now they automatically put in one, two, three. I want to change it to these numbers over here. So I just simply click Edit, okay, Axes Data Range. So I'm going to just go to the top, uh, scroll all the way down, hit OK, and OK. And now if we go look at it, it should have the numbers we want. The other thing I can do while I'm up here is on layouts, okay? Um, quick layouts. If I want to do, you know how we do often like to have axes, labels, and chart titles here? We can do that. Um, for the chart title, what you can do is highlight the whole thing. And let's say we start some new word. Um, what I'd actually like your title to be, notice I clicked up here in this formula bar. What I'd actually like your title to be is this right here, confidence interval between 2.71 and 11.6. So I've just referenced it. I'm not going to have to type the whole thing in, and there it is for me. This is awesome because now if I switch the name here, it will automatically switch it there. Okay, and then I can give my axis titles, which this is all about hours. Okay, and then your axis title over here, and this axis is always about um, frequency or probability. Okay. Your chart is here. Okay, so now I want to talk about if statements because what we've got to do is on this chart, I somehow need to show where my confidence interval is. So I need to kind of border off the confidence interval. So this is really interesting, a little more sophisticated in Excel. We're going to use something called an if statement. Now, an if statement sets up a condition. So I could say, like, if you have brown hair, jump up in the air. Then if you don't have brown hair, just sit down. That is an if statement. It makes it so that if, if you have a certain quality, you have to do something. And if you don't have that quality, you do something else. So we're going to do that here. What I want is I want to only shade in the area that is outside my confidence interval. Okay? So I'm going to do it outside the lower confidence interval first. So I'm going to type in equals if. Okay? Double click on that. Just open up your little formula bar. And what I've got is the, lo the logical question. So I only want to shade things that 
are less than the lower confidence interval, that aren't in the lower confidence interval, all right? So if we are less than or equal to the lower confidence interval, all right, so what we want for this if is that wherever we are, whatever hours we have, so I'm going to start with this, if this is less than or equal to our um, lower confidence interval, which is 2.71, okay, I saw that right there, then what we do is we know the height is going to be right here, because we know that when negative 10, that is our height, okay? That's what we want to see for the height of lower confidence interval. But if it is not less than that, we don't want to see anything, because that's um, not part of it. So we just do, all I've done here is I've done a quote and then another quote saying like, do nothing. So show no height at all, because I only want to show the height for the area that is outside of this range, okay? All right, now I have that equation. I'm going to double click and fill it. Okay, it filled all the way, but watch this. As soon as I get to a certain point, ah, right here, notice this is now larger than 2.71, so now it fills it with nothing, okay, because that is actually in the confidence interval. We're going to do the same thing for outside the upper confidence interval. So again, question, um, equals if, okay, double click on if. I only want to see the height for the area that is outside of it. So I'm going to go over here. The logical test is going to be then if this number, and this time because it's outside the upper one, it will be greater than or equal to our upper confidence interval, which is 11.26. Okay? If that is the case, then it actually has the height that we originally talked about right here that we originally found. And if it's false, then we do nothing, which means I just go Shift, quote, quote, to say within it, do nothing. Okay? Let's see what our answer is. Where did it go? Ah, why isn't it showing up? There's nothing showing up, and that's actually because, I don't know if you realize this, but negative 10 is outside that upper confidence interval. So I'm just going to fill it down. Oops, why not take it a little faster than that? Okay, uh, double click, and let's see if it worked. If it works, then it should start to show up somewhere along the line, and there it does. So right when we hit the upper confidence interval, the outside of it, the numbers actually start to show up. All right? So now I'm going to actually put this information onto the graph. Put it onto the graph. I'm going to need to be um, adding data. So I'm going to change the graph. So this graph, I want to show the upper and the lower confidence interval. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to activate this graph. I'm going to go to Design, I'm going to go to Select Data, okay? Now this time I actually want to add the data, not just the axes label. So I'm going to actually go to this side and click Add, okay? The series name, well, let's look at it. Our series name, let's first start with the outside lower. It's right there. Here, tricky thing, you've got to delete what's in there, okay? And then for the data, I just click on the first one, uh, Control shift down and say OK. I'm going to also add another one. Let's also add, go ahead and add the upper one. So this is our name. I have to delete the series values. Okay, I'm going to click at the top, Control shift down, and OK, and OK. And let's see if our graph looks good. And here it is. And this does not look right, and I actually think I know why. Our lower confidence interval was not positive 2.7, it was negative, and luckily this is super quick to fix, all right? So um, first thing I'm going to fix is just my title. Oh, it does say negative. It's right there. Okay, so then I'm going to go into here, and if you look at this equation, um, the problem we have with the equation is that we're using that negative. So let me actually get a little closer. I think I'm on the wrong one. This is the equation right here for our if statement. So this needs to be a negative 2.7. So if I just make that negative, I'll say OK. All right, that changed only one value. Now I'm going to just double click and set that for all of them. And now it has just what I want. The only issue might be the look of it. Okay, we might want to have these little edges be the same color to really show the outside of the confidence interval. So if I just activate those, double click on those, okay, and I'll click on the fill button, and let's just change that color. Maybe I'll make it like a bright yellow, okay, and I'll do the same thing with this side. Double click on that, and also fill that with a bright yellow. So now um, they're the same color. 
last thing, since these things aren't very clear and we have a really strong title that explains what's going on, I'm just going to click on those and hit delete. And so now we just have our graph. The last two things here is that one, this is awfully messy. So I probably would, you know, go ahead and move this chart. This is for um, hours on phone, just so I can kind of keep track, or maybe I'd write question one. Um, so I move it over to a new sheet, so it's a little easier for me to keep track of. And then the other thing I'm going to do is right-click right and go ahead and copy it. And when I copy it, I can then go to my Google Doc that I'm sharing with everyone in my group, so I can actually make a poster over here, and then right-click and go ahead and paste it, and paste the graph right onto here. So now I have my confidence interval for that. I'm going to actually put this little sentence underneath it that says, Says the interval falls within our prediction of 7.5 hours. Um, I might write a couple other sentences if I have any other thoughts about how this is surprising or not. Um, and so I now actually already have uh, one of my completed and ideally you can put maybe another one here so every page can hold uh, one, two, or even three of these and you'll end up with only um, three or four pieces of paper that you actually need to print.